What is my number? Welcome to Talk and Chalk. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. If you're one of my regulars, thank you for staying with me. I very much appreciate the support. Today, I'm going to take you through how I engage in some really purposeful dialogue with my students when I do the maths warm up activity. What is my number? If you haven't seen this, I did a video on it with my daughter and I uploaded it to my kids channel, which is called Clever Pickles. And if you haven't seen it, I will link it in the description below. In that description is also the links to my Facebook, my Twitter, uh, my Pinterest and my latest endeavor in social media, which is Instagram. So you can follow me on those if you want to. Um, in that activity, if you watch it, you'll see we play an activity where you put a number in your head and then the kids that are engaged in the activity need to ask you questions where you can only answer yes or no. Now, really, the goal of the activity is not to guess the number. The goal of the activity is to get that really purposeful questioning process going where kids are problem solving and thinking really critically about how they could ask a good question to gauge the answer. The idea being that, you know, you want to eliminate as many numbers as you can so you can figure out what the number is, not spend the next 20 minutes guessing random numbers. So we're looking at number facts when we do that. So I'm going to pretend to put a number in my head. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can guess it. Um, but then I'll pretend that I'm the kids answering the questions as well. So I'm just going to turn this a little bit. Do you like my owl? That's from my sister. Uh, so I'm going to move that around because I'm right handed. Okay. So I'm just going to get my little chalkboard here and I've put a line down the middle of it. So I would use the, the whiteboard. Um, so you could use the whiteboard, you could use chalkboard, whatever you want, doesn't matter, a bit of paper, as long as the kids can see it, they'll need to see this part. And they can have in their hand um, a resource if, if you think they need it. So they could have a hundreds chart that's laminated and write on it with a whiteboard marker or cross numbers off or use counters to cover it up as they eliminate, you know, options. Uh, you could have the interactive whiteboard going with the interactive hundreds chart. If you watch the video with my daughter, though, you'll see that we're using the ye old wooden flip chart with numbers the one that I had in my classroom last year that was really good it was a pl uh, plastic one and it would either flip to a different color or flip to blank and down the bottom it went up to 120 which was great because we could discuss three digit numbers so on this chart that you've got though that you're as the teacher you're writing on this you've got a section for yes and a section for no and this is what you're going to fill in as the students ask you questions. So I'm going to put, okay, I've got a number in my head, I'm not telling you. <laughs> and let's say the student says, um, is it a two digit number? I would say, yes, it's a two digit number. Oh, sorry. That's not very neat handwriting. It's neater in the classroom. <laughs> it's a two digit number. And then if some random student then says, is it a three digit number? Chances are the whole class will go, no, because it's a two digit. However, I'm still going to write it down because for that student in their head, they're still picturing three digit. It could be three digit considering they've asked it. They either haven't heard or they can't picture a two digit. So I'm going to write, no, it can't be a three digit number because we already established that, yes, it is a two digit number. So this might not be relevant to some students in the class that have recognized, right, Miss said that, it. yes, it's two digit. I can picture two digit. I know what a two digit number looks like. That other kid might not. So write it down anyway. No, you had a your yes or no question. That's the response. Okay, so we've established it's two digit. So if they've got their hundreds chart, that's the point then where they either cross off or put a counter or color in or whatever, all of the one digit numbers and any um, three digit numbers they may have if your chart goes up to 110 or 120. So now you're left with all of the two digit numbers. Ideally, you want someone to ask, you know, is it an odd number? And I would say, yes, it is an odd number. What does that mean you need to do now? And then they could color in or cross off or in their head, just eliminate all of the even numbers now because they need to try and visualize this because if you're getting to the point where you're doing this with older kids, stage two, stage three, you don't want them to necessarily need those charts. They should be picturing it in their head and figuring out the numbers that they need. Okay, I know it's two digit. I know it's odd. I can get rid of those columns, those even numbers. 
and go from there. Uh, this is really good for your patterns too. Then uh, let's imagine, uh, and this is where you need to guide the conversation now. And this is great for team teaching because there could be a teacher in the back going, I wonder if it's below 30. And you know, so then a student would go, is it below 30? And you would go, oh, I would say, because I'm answering it. No, it is not less than 30. And then you're getting your symbols in here and getting this conversation in here as well, because then some of those kids are going to go, what does that thing mean again? Remember that means less than, um, <laughs> I sound a bit loony tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> okay. Continuing on. And really you're going to have that awesome moment where someone's saying, is it less than 30? And you say, yes, it's less than 30. You can eliminate all of those other numbers on there that would have been bigger than 30, but that's not the number in this case. I wonder if you know what it is. That's my teacher voice. <laughs> Okay, moving on. And then hopefully some student might say, um, is there a six digit in one of those? Is there is the numeral six in there? And I would go, yes, there is a numeral six in one of these digits. And as your class gets more cluier, cluier, did I just invent a word, a word, a word? I can't even talk. <laughs> as they get better at this, Someone will then take that information there and go, well, that's eradicated anything that's 40, 50, 70, 80, 90, whatever. Um, and it's also eradicated anything that has, now we said it's an odd, so we already got rid of the even. So it's anything that has a one in the units, um, a three, uh, sorry, it's odd. <laughs> it's eradicated anything that's two, four, six, eight. And so someone might go, is that numeral sorry, is the value of that 60? Is the value of that numeral 60? To which I would go, yes, the value is 60. So now they know that that six is in our tens value and it's the number 60 something, which is eradicated anything else that's on there. And then so that's when you get to the point where they go, is it 61? And then someone will go, is it 62? And then hopefully you really want the rest of the class at this point to be going, it can't be 62 because it's an odd number. Maybe not in that voice. <laughs> and then they'll go through and eventually someone will go, is it 65? And I'll go, yes, it's 65. Hooray, Jojo points or something. Um, but really the idea being is that all these facts are coming out of it. And the fact that they get to pinpoint, no, it can't be that because of that and the conversation that comes out of it. And it takes a while to get it too. The kids aren't going to do this straight away. This will take a while of conversation with those kids that um, are snapping into it a lot faster than the others. And that does not mean that this is not purposeful for everyone involved. Those kids that might seem to be getting it really, really quickly, they're the ones you might target one day and throw them a three digit number or a four digit number or whatever or decimal if you're you know working with our higher ones those kids though that may not be getting it as quick are still reinforcing these facts that come with it they're still um, learning this language odd and even they're still going with numeral value they're looking at these are all the yeses these are the no's and not all of our kids think of the yeses in my head I'm not picturing what it could be me personally I'm picturing what it can't be which is why when I've taught it I start with the chart and I cross out all of those other options. That does not mean, my, mean that my kids though are visualizing what it can't be. They could be visualizing all the things that it could be. Um, and we need to make sure that we're you know, catering for all of those needs. If kids want to knock it off in different colors, go for it. If they want to do it just by blocking it out, go for it. They might want to cut it out. It's up to you. Or you might just do this at the point where they have no resources around them whatsoever Maybe you have a hundreds chart to look at and refer to. Maybe you have nothing. They're doing it all in their head. And that's why when you get to the point where this can be a group task and you can have a group leader running this where a group leader picks up a number and says, okay, I've got my number, start asking me facts. They, you'll find that often they'll get a whiteboard themselves and put these things down to be able to track what those guesses were and what the possible answers could be. So, um, you know, there's lots of other um, facts that I'm sure would come out of this conversation depending on what your kids are thinking of and depending on what your focus is, what learning intentions you have in it. And that activity 
Um, once the kids get used to the process of what's involved and they're not just all shouting over the top of each other, um, because I don't, I don't do hands up for this. I, I pick people out once they're in routine. When we first play it, it's hands up. It's volunteers who wants to have a go, who has a, a question. And then after a while, I just go, you know, Johnny, Jimmy, Susie, whoever, um, give me your question. And if they're stuck, okay, we'll come back to you. Think about it. And if we come back to you again and you're still stuck, right? Who can who can be a helper? Who can be a friend? And and do it in peer sort of form that way and see how they go. So um, hopefully that's helped you out. I find it a really good activity. It usually only lasts about five minutes once you've got them into the routine, maybe 10 minutes. And I have found in every class that I've ever done this with, they ask for it. Are we playing What's My Number today? Can we play it today? Sometimes when they finish early, they'll be off in the corner doing it themselves because it feels challenging. Even as a teacher, if you've picked a student to get up with their number and I sit and I be part of the crowd and I'm asking, is it a two digit number? They feel the challenge as they're doing it. And those kids that may not put up their hands or feel so confident to do it, they're still hearing that information. They're still engaging with it. Some of that is soaking in, I guarantee you, some of it's soaking in because that one day after a month of them doing nothing, they'll put up their hand, the first one, and they'll say, is it an odd number? Because they know it's an easy question to ask. They know there's always going to be a yes or no. It's not right or wrong. It's just yes or no. It can't be right or wrong because it's not wrong. We're all doing maths. It's great. <laughs> okay. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It's much appreciated. I hope you enjoyed it. I will put my button down there. You just hover on that to click to subscribe if you haven't done it. I'll chuck, I don't even know, another random video at the top there. And welcome to any of my new people. I'm glad to have you with me. Remember, this is just my tips and advice. Thanks, guys. Bye.